we want to fill it all the way to the top. The more ice, the better, because even as we're stirring this down, we're going to stir it about 50%. A lot of bartenders, when they're stirring cocktails, they make the fundamental mistake of not stirring it to the proper dilution. The handle is actually twisting in my hand. And then, once you stir it slow, do it slowly, you get your speed going, eventually, you can get a nice action going, and it looks incredibly professional, and it's fun to do. Hey, bartender. You're watching advancedmixology.com with Brian Van Flander. And today we're going to learn how, when, why, and how to stir a cocktail. Most bartenders are quite sure when and how to shake versus stir. We're going to clear that up right now. If every ingredient in your cocktail has an alcoholic component, including bitters, we always stir the cocktail. Because a great spirit has natural oils in those cocktails, and we want to keep those oils intact. More importantly, when you shake a cocktail, you're aerating it. You're forcing little micro bubbles throughout the liquid and that changes the texture of the cocktail. We want to keep those oils intact so they coat the back of our tongue and when we exhale after a great sip we're enjoying all of that flavor of that spirit. So when stirring a great cocktail you want to use the proper vessel. A lot of bartenders make the mistake of stirring out of a Boston tin often because that's all they have available but if you're going to be a professional you want to use the right tool for the right job and in this case using a mixing glass is the appropriate vessel. There are many different styles of mixing glass. The little crisscross lattice is called a Yari out of Japan, but these right here are different styles and types. I prefer this style with a rounded base, but you can choose one that best suits your needs and feels good to you. Now, when we're building a cocktail and we're gonna build a stirred cocktail, the first thing we do is add our spirit and then we add our ice. And even though we're only going to add an ounce and a half to three ounces of what's liquid, depending on how many cocktails we're making, we're still going to fill it almost all the way to the top with ice. Today, I thought I'd make a variation on a classic Whiskey Manhattan. Now, traditionally, Whiskey Manhattan is made with rye, but today I thought I'd make a little, use a little bit of Uncle Nearest Tennessee whiskey. Uncle Nearest 1884, a remarkable whiskey, Uncle Nearest himself was a slave who was owned by Jack Daniels, perhaps the greatest whiskey producer the world never knew. And he taught Jack Daniels how to make that famous number seven sour mash out of Tennessee. But this is even better. A phenomenal Tennessee whiskey. We're gonna add that, and we're also gonna add a little bit of Carpano Antica Formula Sweet Vermouth. Been around since 1786 from Giuseppe and Carpano. And we're gonna add our appropriate proportions of that a little bit of the whiskey. And then bitters. And I'm just gonna use some Angostura classic bitters out of, uh, made in Trinidad, but originally created in the 1800s out of uh, the Angostura Straits in Venezuela. Now, to this, we're gonna add our ice. And as I said, we wanna fill it all the way to the top. I actually have some right here and I, the more ice, the better, because even as we're stirring this down, we're going to stir it about 50%. A lot of bartenders, when they're stirring cocktails, they make the fundamental mistake of not stirring it to the proper dilution. They give it three or four or 10 stirs, not enough. We want to get a nice long spoon. And then, and here's the key to stirring. You want to conform the back of the spoon to the back of the glass. And as it's turning around, the back of the spoon continues to stir in the back of the glass. A lot of bartenders, again, make that simple mistake of gripping on to the handle and forcing it around. And the, the bar spoon, it stays in just one location. Instead, by allowing the back of the spoon to touch the back of the glass, the handle is actually twisting in my hand. And then, once you stir it slow, do it slowly, you get your speed going, Eventually, you can get a nice action going, and it looks incredibly professional, and it's fun to do. And I'm not just stirring it three or four times. I want to stir it. There's no fixed rate because it all depends on the size of your ice. I can't tell you to stir it 50 times because maybe you have a slow stir, or maybe you have a fast stir, or maybe using 
hollow ice or you're using larger cubes. Best large cubes are always good for stirring cocktails because it has a much slower rate of dilution, but we can control that rate. So once I've stirred it down to the proper level, you want to professionally taste it. A lot of bartenders do this. I'm not a huge fan of this. I like to use a straw. You can taste it that way, just a drop on the back of your hand. Or I like to have a little tasting vessel. And it's by pouring that. Again, it's delicious cocktail, a little bit strong. When we're balancing a cocktail, we want it to acid, sugar, and alcohol in proper proportions. The ethanol, since this is all alcohol, it's a little bit high. And so we just want to stir it down just a touch more. Now I've got it exactly where I want. Put that on top. And if you've done it right, you should be able to push down with your finger and it'll catch. And you put your finger right there on the edge and grip it and you can pour it into your glass. Taking my glass, I have of course a cocktail cherry and we're not gonna use those artificial cocktail cherries that are soaked in formaldehyde with high fructose corn syrup. Yuck, let's get rid of those. And in this case, I'm using, uh, we can use Luxardo cherries. In this case, I'm actually using a premium cocktail cherries that are uh, soaked in whiskey. So we know that the cherry syrup is gonna complement the cocktail that we already have. Now here's the other critical thing. Once we've stirred our cocktail and we've got it at the proper dilution, we're gonna keep it low. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had a bartender stir me a great cocktail and they do this action to make a nice show of it and now you're aerating it. it completely defeats the purpose of stirring. So let's keep it low and creamy and oily, no bubbles. We don't want bubbles in our Manhattan, and our Rob Roy, and our gin or vodka martinis. Now, a dirty martini, we're adding a non-alcoholic component, the olive brine. So you can go ahead and shake a dirty martini or anything that has a non-alcoholic mixer. Now, there is a beautiful Manhattan. So, I hope you like this video. Please like and or share with your friends. And until our next cocktail together, bottoms up.